Hey guys, ladies, my name is Dark Gummit, and today we are going to be doing a casual review. It's an afterthought of a smartphone. Now, it's been a year since I've had this phone. Eight months, eight, six to eight months of it being my daily driver, and that is the next bit Robin. Now, this is the Electric Blue Edition. It's a, it was a Kickstarter backer exclusive, so it's not available but there are two colors that are available that you can go get, uh, mint and midnight blue. So I've been a supporter, and I've had this phone for a year, and I was originally going to do a review when I first got it, but life happened, and here I am. So what do I think of this phone? Should people get it? Is, is it a good phone to still get? I mean, it's for sale still, and it's been a year. So, why would someone want it? Well, this phone has truly amazed me. Specs aside, all other, what makes this phone unique? The fact that it's cloud-based. Now, that might be scary to some. Cloud, you may think of hacks, and the loss of data, and being insecure, but that's only a few cases, and most of the time it's fixed. And really, they only go after the people who are really big or famous. So, if I was you, have your top secret stuff, and the photos that you don't want to share with other people, maybe somewhere else, not on the cloud. But everything else, the cloud is really useful. It allows you to access it from anywhere you want, but it allows you to never lose your information. But next bit took a leap of faith. They wanted to make a cloud-based phone, a phone that backs up dynamically. You never lose any of your stuff. Whether you root the phone, you factory reset it, you drop it in a toilet, you will not lose your data. It will have all your pictures backed up. It will have all your contacts backed up. It will have all of your app data, the apps that you had installed. Better than Google Drive does, and it actually backs you up based on the latest, or the the update that you were on. So if you're someone who's like, oh, I erase all my phone, I get it back, now my phone is broken because of some updates from an app. No. This updates the, up, updates the version that you backed it up on, that you chose to back it up on. So if you didn't update it, okay. If you hadn't updated it in a year, okay. If the app is no longer on the market, no big deal. It's now on the phone. You're safe. If you downloaded it, you're good. If you downloaded it from a third party, you're good. It doesn't have to be even on the Play Store. I find that incredible. Let's talk about when it runs out of storage. Don't we hate the message that says ran out of storage, out of storage, need to delete things, optimizing, ugh, it's terrible. This phone doesn't do that. Storage is limited. We live in a world where storage is limited and storage size has been growing. For the past 10 or 20 years, it has grown exponentially, but we're still limited on storage because Things that we want to store on there have also grown exponentially. Videos were, were, they used to be half a gig or a gig. Now they're 50 gigs. They're, they're 25, 50 gigs. That's what's on a Blu-ray disc. That's huge. Games. Games used to be, I mean, some of them used to be a few megabytes. Then they got to the point where they were half a gig. And those PC gamers out there are laughing because they're, right now, downloading games that are five gigs big. They're also downloading mods and DLCs. We live in a limited storage world. So the Nextbit Cloud allows you to offload everything from the phone. It's secure. It's backed up, so if you need it, you can. 
And what it does is it dynamically offloads these apps, pictures, videos, music, as you run out of storage. It does it every night. It already has it backed up. Essentially, every night you go, you plug in your phone, it's charging, it's under Wi-Fi, it backs everything up. Now the phone knows what is backed up and what's not. And what it will do is, if you haven't used, say, an app for a few months, or you took a picture a long time ago and now it's way, way, way in your gallery and you probably haven't even looked at it since then. Same music you haven't listened to in a long time and you can customize what it offloads and what it keeps. But essentially, it will go through and delete things. Things that, but it will keep a, a ghost icon for apps. So you can easily click it, it will load it back on, and no big, no sweat. That da the app data is still there, so it, as, it acts as if nothing happened. The apps are unaffected, same for the pictures. The pictures offloaded the original size, and what it stays on there is a significantly reduced version on the phone. So if you view it, you know, you view it, you like it, um, and it still looks the same on our phone, but what if we wanted to send it to someone or get it printed? No big deal. When we send it, the original is actually sent, not the reduced size and it only becomes a reduced size version once you're running out of storage. This has 32 gigs of storage. It also has 100 gigs of data, which they say that depending on per, per user need basis, they will expand. But I have yet reached it because since I don't have access to the cloud, the cloud is based, it's not like Dropbox, it's not like cloud, or iCloud, or Box, or, or uh, Google Drive, or any of that. It's not like that. There's people out there who don't like to delete things. I don't. I don't like to go through and, you know, organize. I do. I delete things, but it's hard. I have... Most of the time, within the first few months, I'll have upwards of four to 500 apps. Okay, not the first few months. Maybe a little longer. But, like right now, most of my devices have four to six hundred apps. They have hundreds of pictures, if not more. Videos, etc. I have to consistently back things up. Consistently delete things. Consistently make sure everything's safe and secure. With this phone, that is no longer a worry. So, what else do I like about this phone? Well, obviously, it has dual front-facing speakers. I really like that. Um, besides this phone, there's only a few other phones. Uh, HTC, um, that's about it. I mean, there's not many phones out there that actually have dual front-facing, if not front-facing. Front-facing is really good. If you've ever had it on tablet, which a lot of tablets do default to front-facing, because when you're playing a game or media or, or I mean, watching you know, video or listening to music, front-facing speakers work phenomenally. So, I really like that. Now, on a phone, I don't know. I'm still iffy, but since this this originally wasn't my primary phone, it was my, my secondary business phone to keep everything separate, I didn't notice it very much. It actually, for what I used it for, it worked out fantastic, and it it didn't muffle or anything because I, I assume that's why people they keep it on the bottom but it probably muffles just as bad as a back facing speaker I mean though that's terrible location <laughs> so the speakers are completely fine now they're not fantastic they're not high audio quality um, they're not gonna sound you know high high def hi-fi but they work, and they're front-facing, so you get more of the sound, and you're more immersed, and it works. I liked it. And then also it has a the standard 13 megapixel um, camera, so people were concerned about the picture quality. Um, now, I, I wasn't going to go over the specs, but I'm going to go over that spec. Um, Camera. There was a lot of concern about camera quality. Not only when it first shipped out, people kind of went crazy 
the backers who originally got the phone, some of them dropped the phone because they got whiffed that the camera wasn't good. Which, at the, ri at, at the beginning, originally, yes, it was bad. But, 13 megapixels. Same camera that the Note 4 had. Which everyone loved. Why would it be bad? Software. I knew that. A lot of people didn't. You can improve things dramatically with software. You can also ruin things dramatically with software. That's also why the speakers at the beginning were so bad, was software. Uh, and the phone was doing weird things. Um, so, the, the zoom was bad, uh, the picture quality was bad, the autofocus was bad, everything was bad. Then they updated it. After a few updates, now it actually works good, and I can show some pictures. If you go to my article, I left a link. I, um, actually, I personally didn't take any pictures. I was going to, but I forgot, and we were on vacation, and my mom uh, and sister both asked if they could borrow my phone to take pictures, because they had lost their camera. I'm glad, because they took some really good pictures, and they're not photographers at all. They're very casual. They have... I bought him a camera, or bought my mom a camera, um, because she likes taking pictures, and my sister likes taking selfies, so I, didn't, I couldn't, you know, what's the use of buying a point shoot camera for that? You have your phone. Um, but they took some really good pictures. They took pictures of my family, they took pictures of the animals, they took pictures of scenery. I took one. Um, it was a very scenic shot at Devil's Den in Arkansas, um, and... When I was going back and looking at the pictures, I was like, wow, that's not bad. These are very good pictures. But then when I went back, because in the back of my head, I was like, I thought they were bad. These are really good. But then I looked at them a few months prior to that. Ooh, they were bad. They were bad. I couldn't take pictures of, like, a dog. I was trying to take pictures of a dog or a room or, a, you know, and it was bad. It was like, wow, that's like, you shouldn't even use that camera. You shouldn't even save the picture. It was bad, but then they fixed it. So, and that's how most things are. Things aren't perfect, especially at the beginning. And this was a, a new smartphone company, and they were trying something new. And obviously, what was new for them, not only the customer, but new for them was they were designing a smartphone. This is their first smartphone. So... They've done well. Now, it's not perfect. Really, it's not. It has flaws, but for the price you pay, and for what it offers, this is a really good phone. It met my expectations. It went above and exceeded my expectations. This was a really good phone. I still use it. It is my daily driver. My phone is still broken <laughs> because I have this phone and so I haven't had the motivation to go get a phone or been also waiting for my upgrade. But this is a really good phone. Yeah, yeah, it overheats. Yeah, the, the speaker quality, you know, at the beginning wasn't perfect. And even now it's, eh. you know, the camera quality, I mean, it's good enough to take vacation photos, take casual pictures, but everything else, this is a really good phone. It's a phone that deserves at least some attention, some time. If you go on their website, you can order their phone. I think they sell through Amazon. You should look at it, especially if you're interested in buying either another phone. You need to upgrade, say your phone broke, or you're just wanting a secondary phone, like me, you know, a business phone or a phone for, for fun, and the other phone is for school or for work or for whatever. Look into this phone. This phone is really good for the money, and it has lasted for a year. That's hard to say for a lot of phones that you spend, you know, that's not a flagship phone. You know, most of the flagship phones that you see yeah, those last for a year, two years, three years. Some people have their phones for four or five years or longer, and they. but it was a flagship phone originally. This was not a flagship phone. It was not flagship price. It was not a flagship processor or RAM or screen or speaker or camera. It was far from it. 
and still is. But for the price, the value is there. What they offer is unique. Next bit, you did a good job. And if you want to know more, I wrote an article about it and my experience. But let me know. Tell me, tell me what you think. And tell me if you had the phone, what kind of things you don't like or like, and uh, leave some suggestions on maybe some tips and tricks of this phone. Next bit, Robin. Check them out.